Good afternoon, people. This is Crushing Cortex here, bringing you another shiny battle. This is a fun battle I had with my good old buddy Shepard922, a friend I've had in the shiny hunting community for a very long time. I met him via Cerebi, and um, we became fairly close 2011, 2012, but uh, we've been very close ever since, and I'm really, really delighted that he's been able to accept a shiny battle invitation of sorts. You'll notice that none of the shinies which I have in my team right now have actually been used in shiny battles ever before. This is a totally new team I brought about, literally using all six of my newest shinies, putting them together in one team, and just seeing how the results go. And it's not particularly great, I've got two Pokemon which have four times weaknesses to fire, as well as Articuno, who is also uh, fire weak as well. But it's all about improvisation, about having fun. Shepard was fairly, um, he's a bit reserved about the idea of winning this battle. He thought his team didn't really have a chance of succeeding. But we'll see what happens about that when we actually get into the battle, starting now. So we decide to have a bit of fun here. Um, as I said before, our Shepard decides to go forward immediately. He decides to bring himself into the battle, into the form, in the form of a shiny Explode. Uh, well, I bring out this fairly unique shiny Uxie set that I wanted to try out. This shiny Uxie is actually what they call a trick scarf um, set, which involves having a choice scarf on and being able to trick it onto Pokemon which threaten you if you so wish. So I immediately decide to put up Stealth Rocks as a support measure, but that Explode Boom Burst, even with my Uxie being a calm nature and full EV HP and special defense, does way more than I thought. So I decided to go to Gengar and hope for a free switch, but then it doesn't use Dark Pulse, but Shepard does decide to go for Ice Beam, which I was very threatened about because Gengar has very low defences. It's about as bulky as paper. Um, I try for the Focus Blast here, praying it hits, it does, and Shepard goes down for the count immediately, so I was very, very lucky to that hit, otherwise Dark Splard would have completely decimated me. Shepard brings out one of his favourite females in gaming, we have Claire Radfield over here. Uh, bringing the battle. I was afraid this Drifling might be Scarf for whatever reason, so I just decided to go for the immediate Destiny Bond, simply to allow Shepard to kind of see what he could do with my Gengar. As this is a fun battle, it wasn't really too competitive, so we just decided to even the odds a little bit. So I just go for the Destiny Bond. I'm not sure if this Drifling has Thunderbolt as its one and only attacking move. Shadow Ball is super effective. But Shepard did say he wasn't fully familiar with the uh, type combinations, so he might not have known that Ghost was super effective against Ghost. Regardless, this is uh, turn 5 of a battle, and it's already 5-4. Uh, We've already lost 3 Pokemon. I decided to go to Parasect as my next Pokemon, simply because I didn't really know what else I could do. And Shepard brings out Temperance, who I've heard is quite the delicate wench, and I absolutely love Shiny Noivern. A lot of people don't like it. I love it. The colours are so bright and so different from the normal, and especially like the blue, um, the blue mark on its forehead, which is amazing. That being said, though, I couldn't let my Parasite take a hurricane and instantly die, so I go to Articuno, hoping it's able to take the hit thanks to its high special defence. And it takes it, doesn't take it as well as I thought it would, and then it actually uses Draco Meteor, which I thought would likely very well kill me. Because Draco Meteor is a very powerful move, more powerful than Hurricane, but Articuno isn't even EV'd in any sort of defence whatsoever, no defence investment, it's speed and special attack, it tanks both a Draco Meteor and a Hurricane, and completely destroys this Noivern in, in like one shot, I'm amazed, this Articuno is such a trooper, very proud of it. That being said, um, Shepard decides to send in the Succubus Morrigan, who seems to have taken the form of Electros. I know Electros is slow, so I decide to take the opportunity to Roost, predicting the oncoming Thunderbolt and recovering health without losing too much, but then Shepard immediately goes for Flamethrower and it completely throws a monkey wrench into that plan. It's almost as if he predicted the Roost. I mean, he does very well for somebody who claims not to be a competitive battler. Seeing that it's using Flamethrower, though, I decide to make a switch into my Ninetales, hoping he clicks Flamethrower again so I can get a lovely, delicious Flash Fire boost and deal a really powerful shot against anything which Shepard decides to bring in. Knowing this, I guess Shepard decides to switch in his Shiny Cloister, another beautiful Shiny I'm really jealous of. Now, Cloister, as you probably know, has absolutely catastrophically bad special defense, 
So this flash fire boosted flamethrower from a life orb nine tails is more than enough to KO the cloister on sight. A shame it wasn't able to do anything, but hey, uh, what can you do really? Atlas shrugged, so he brings along this tentacle to try and uh, circumvent my potential nine tail sweeping opportunity. I can't do anything to this thing with its high special defense, but burning it and allowing some residual damage across the rest of the battle seems to be a pretty good trick for me, as I know nine tails won't really be able to do too much for the rest of the fight. Tentacle surfs and dashes my hopes of any sort of potential nine tails sweep white venom there. Unfortunately, I was only able to take down one Pokemon, but it did better than I expected, because it's nine tails and it's not really good without drought. Parasect, I decided to go in simply so to see if it can do more to the tentacle, potentially knock off an item it might have had. I was afraid it might have had black sludge, but you don't see any recovery, so it clearly didn't. He goes for the ice beam, it freezes me right on here. I was pissed off, and then it immediately falled out, and then Shepard got quite understandably annoyed because of that. So we got a bit of hacks, but it didn't really end up mattering anyway. It's technical the Mystic Water, which, um, it's something, but it wasn't something that was going to immediately threaten me, and it just decided to do a bit more chip damage. I decided to go into Sherox for German Scissor. I traded this to Bloody Wolf 17, and it actually kept the name Sherox from the trade. I presume there's some sort of glitch involved in there. So it, this Scissor, the shiny Scissor, pledged German nationality, uh, but it's still ready to serve me. It doesn't quite want to stay with Bloody, but uh, <laughs> there you go. That's why it's called Sherox and not Scissor. It's not a nickname, it's the German name. And uh, Scissor is now a uh, certified citizen of the German nation, so uh, that's hard to be proud about. The Bullet Punch is able to take down that tentacle from the tiny percentage it's at. It has low defense, but I didn't think it would take it out anyway. But then Electros comes back in, and um, I assume I can outspeed it and go for a U-turn and switch out. This Electros has a Quick Claw, and that scared the hell out of me when I first did this. I thought my Scissor was going to be dead, and I would have lost this immediately, since Quick Claw is generally a banned item, for good reason. Because it just activates out of nowhere, and can just completely override any priority any speed advantage one might have, and I could have easily died there, but Shepard must have thought I was going to switch out, so it goes for the Grass Knot rather than the Flamethrower. So my Sizzle's safe, but that Quick Claw really, really threatened me, and it activates here again. So I wanted Articuna to get another kill, potentially, but then Electros Flamethrowers me, dashes my hopes, and Articuna just sort of goes down in quite a quite literal blaze of glory there. It was a shame, but I decided to go into Uxy now. I mentioned that this was a Trick Scarf Uxie earlier today, and now I'm going to be putting it in good use. So I'm going to actually get rid of my Choice Scarf, as well as getting rid of his Quick Claw. So now I have a Quick Claw, and that Electros is locked into Flamethrower. This doesn't really work too well for the rest of my team, because Mega Sizzle is one of my Pokémon. But, as it turns out, Electros, even with a Choice Scarf, still can't outspeed this Uxie, and this Uxie is HP Special Defense. So, yeah, Morrigan seems to be slow as balls. I don't think Chef actually gave any speed investment into this Electros. But, regardless, I'm able to get a free U-turn, and I decide to inc switch into Paraset as a sacrificial lamb to take any fire attacks. It has an Ochre Berry, because I didn't have any better items, but it's Paraset, it's not going to do anything at all, ever. So, it just kills over to the Flamethrower. Luckily for me, though, this Electros... Is at a very low HP range. It's a bulky Pokemon, but I feel a Technician Bullet Punch from my Mega Sizzle might be able to KO it, and it does. So Morrigan's down for the count, and this was a fun battle. And uh, thanks so much again, Shepard, for having this match with me. It really means a lot, and it's a real pleasure that we're able to engage in such activity. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Um, hopefully, we'll get another shiny battle soon. I had a battle with the Master 327, a ridiculous Ubers battle. Which you might see soon, you might not. I'm not sure when it'll be uploaded, but when the time comes, I'm sure everything will go quite smoothly, quite peachily. Thank you for watching again, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed this battle and it didn't end up being too terrible. Um, goodbye, I guess. See you soon.